Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Ahead of the Curve panel. I'm Katherine Given, Senior Style and Market Editor at Lux Interiors and Design. So Las Vegas market is happening and it's officially open from 30th until September 3rd. So for everyone that is heading there, um, enjoy. For those of us who are, are joining virtually, um, there's a lot of amazing programming, a lot of amazing digital programming, including this panel. So please head to uh, lasvegasmarket.com to check it out. Additionally, after this panel, a CEU page will be emailed to all participants. So back to why we are here today. I am thrilled to be chatting about trends and what we are seeing at market with four very talented designers. Um, we have design duo Steve uh, so, Somigi. I'm going to pronounce that. Philip, please. It's uh, Samoji. Samoji. Oh, I did it phonetically too. And then oh, it's all good. Philip Malwishko. We have Sandra. There you go. <laughs> Sandra Espinay and Meredith Ellis. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Our pleasure. Thanks so much for having us. Before we dive in and, and start talking about trends, I, I wanna introduce each of you and just give a little bit of a brief bio so people know where you are and, and your background and, and what you've been doing. So based in Chicago, Steve and Philip Design really began when Steve was working in residential real estate, uh, brokering high-end homes. However, his love of design soon became paramount and he began to consult his clients on concepts for their homes and offices and narrowed in on his true calling. So during this time, he met Philip over a drafting table at Harrington College of Design, which I love. Uh, <laughs> Steve adored Philip's aesthetic and eye for detail. Philip loved Steve's fearless hands-on attitude and after graduation, they joined forces and eventually exchanged rings to become a husband and husband team. And for over a decade now, um, the duo has specialized in full service strategies for new construction and renovations. And their goal is to create unique schemes for homes, offices, and retail spaces with an emphasis on quality and elegance. So thank you so much for being here. We, I really appreciate it. Of course. Next up is Sandra. Uh, Sandra Espinay is a sought after accomplished interior designer and lifelong traveler who represents the epitome of relaxed luxury and casual international style. Her experience and extensive travel has given her a unique perspective in her design approach and her work has been published in numerous international publications. She's also received multiple awards, distinctions, and has also appeared on several TV segments and podcasts. She released her first licensing product, a line of rugs for John Aga carpets, for Aga John carpets in 2013. And she also has two beautiful coffee table books. And Sandra, you are in LA in Los Cabos, yes. uh, where you operate, right? Yes. So welcome, thank you for being here. And last but not least, Meredith. Um, she brings over two decades of experience across the interior design industry to her practice with exceptional attention to detail and an eye for the creative. Meredith creates soulful homes, expertly layering pattern, texture, and color to bring a curated, collected feel tailored specifically for each client. Her sophisticated yet livable spaces have garnered many accolades. She began her career working for the legendary interior designer, Bunny Williams, before moving west to work with um, internationally re re renowned designer Michael Smith. Meredith also launched her own design firm in 2008, re relocated her business to her home state of Texas, and is also the founder and owner of James, um, which is a to-the-trade showroom with locations throughout Texas that represents dozens of amazing fabric, wallpaper, furniture, lighting, and carpet lines. So hi, Meredith. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So let's dive in. So quickly, um, for those who are um, who are with us today, the Ahead of the Curve program um, is something that where the panelists and myself were asked to identify and describe a trend we're seeing in the home and decor space right now. We then did some scouting and selected a few products to discuss. So first up, we have Quartz, Crystal, and Mystery. Um, which was put together by Stephen Phillip. 
So they're saying having a natural element that brings glamour and transparency can give a room the allure of mystery. The way quartz material is being shifted into veneers for furniture, lit to create magic within light fixtures, and transformed into sculptures so its natural beauty shines on a bookcase is putting us into a trance. And I agree, this trend is so beautiful, very ethereal. Um, can you talk a little bit more about it and, and sort of how you're seeing it? Sure. So we actually started seeing this just in terms of when we would go to the stone yard, um, when we would be selecting slabs for clients' kitchen, kitchens and bathrooms. And we saw that there was a lot of stone coming from Brazil that was had like a, like a opacity and a transparency similar to onyx. Mm. Um, and we loved using it as countertop material or as slab or backsplash, et cetera. And then when we saw the trend coming into more kind of smaller pieces throughout the furniture, lighting, accessory market, we just felt like it was a really nice way to transition that. And sometimes it just adds uh, a layer of mystery and kind of fantasy into smaller spaces. And if you kind of commit to the, tr to the trend, it can really, um, be something fantastic in you know in multiples or in in larger swaths with, within a within a space. I agree and especially with this mix here I feel like when you light it it really add, it's like a whole nother dimension right? Yeah yeah totally um, especially because because of the opacity when you when you backlight it it kind of glows and shimmers and um, in a in a completely different way than 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 other materials. Um, and the fact that it's natural, each piece is unique and different. Even with this Jamie Young lamp where it's not even lit, it's just, um, in essence, just these cubes that are slightly varied and are stacked within, a, within, um, within the lamp. When the, when the light bulb glows below, uh, above it, it kind of shines and kind of adds a different dimension within, within a tablescape. Yeah, this um, piece is spectacular too. How how would you use this? Uh, I love this John Richard uh, pendant. I I feel like the fact that they left the the raw hewn texture of the of the quartz is really really interesting, um, and they almost kind of veneered it into kind of these sh um, these kind of slivers and um, the raw edges around that. I feel like this um, within a staircase, multiple kind of groupings at different heights would be really amazing. Or um, even above an island or a peninsula within a kitchen, just a row of them all at the same height would be really, really spectacular as well. And I also love, I mean, it just adds another, another dimension of material, right? Like it's very subtle, it's not in your face, but it's just yeah. sort of this glowing orb, um, you know, with the material that you chose. And this piece is interesting too. It's just like a little objet, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just a little object. I do, I do think it's lit, it's, it's a little lamp, um, but mm. this within a, within a bookcase would be so adorable. Um, it almost has like this kind of like little mystical element to it like kind of like an energy field or something with all the with all the quartz kind of in pyramid pyramidal shapes within this kind of brass cube um it's particularly i think um this quartz material is really really successful when it's mixed with brass mm. um and i feel like the the metal and the the opacity do something really really interesting together so I have to ask you, are you into like stones and materials? Like I collect like amethyst and all these things that have separate meanings. Are you? Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah Steve and I went to, uh, to, um, to New Mexico a few years ago and we went to this big kind of stone shop and we got all our, all our different crystals and we have our little uh, altar and it's, it's, it's lovely. And especially even if you have, if you gather well, when, when you're traveling, little uh, stones and objects, and a lot of time there's a quartz element within it, um, and put it in front of a window, you kind of, again, have that kind of um, the light coming through it. It casts really beautiful shadows. Um, this, this object, this coffee table is kind of a, an example of how the stone, this quartz material is being reused in a little bit, even more in a contemporary way, where the coffee table is super sleek, super polished, with this kind of brass 
form, but then the top is the is the is the um, is that quartz material. And this within a within a living room, um, I think it actually comes in a couple sizes. I feel like if you have a large space, doing a couple of these kind of grouped mm -hmm. together in a, in the middle of the room could be really really successful. Um, and again, like similar to what you were saying, it kind of adds. Um, if you want, if you're doing a, a, a very neutral scheme, having these kind of different textures of white and, and natural materials adds interest, adds texture, um, creates um, layers without color or pattern or some of the other kind of more uh, kind of more usual ways of doing that within a room. So I'm curious, have you kind of been seeing this now in the market or, or in design for a while? I mean, obviously natural materials isn't something that's brand new, but do you yeah. think it's sort of coming around or people are sort of embracing it in a new way? I'm, I'm just curious to hear, you know, what, how you're seeing it. I think that natural materials are always, it's always a smart idea to do that. I feel like there's a level of longevity and like classicness of just using materials that are natural. Um, I think that the cool thing about this specific material is I do feel like Maybe it's not like like brand new in terms of this this year or this market, but I do think that the way manufacturers are kind of modifying the material and creating, you know, even some manufacturers are veneering it, and you can get dressers that are kind of are are wrapped in in this quartz quartz material. I think it is unusual, and um, I think ahead of the of ahead of the trend a little bit. Yeah. Meredith and Sandra, I'd love to sort of hear, you know, what your take is on, on Philip's trend. Like, would you use it? Are you always drawn to natural materials? Um, you know, even this beautiful noir piece, is this something up your alley? I love the, I love the shape. I don't know what the size is on that table, but I love how he says he's doing groupings hmm. in the picture, the, the, the one right before this. I, I, that's something that uh, just really sparked my interest is how he's grouped that John Richard piece how he's doing groupings of them together. I love that. And um, yeah, I totally, um, natural is always something I think that incorporates really well into interiors for sure. And I definitely love the use of the quartz combined with- Well, I feel the same way you do. Um, my, my, a lot of my designs are beach and uh, resort and all of these looks, natural stones fit in perfectly because it's, you know, you don't want to compete with nature. Uh, nature is, you know, it, it's the most beautiful thing we have. So I think it's just part of it. It's almost like bringing the outside into your interior. So yeah, I love it. And I, I really love this space and how you, how you lit this countertop just is to hold, I think it's how you lit it, but talk to us a little bit about, about this bathroom. Yeah. So this is similar to what I, when, at the, when we were starting, this is in essence, the slab material of this quartz of this quartz and the fact that it has this opacity, it gives the option of literally making it glow from within. So when we designed this bathroom, the, the structure below this sink element is all made out of acrylic plexi. So then when they put this countertop and the kind of the fascia piece in the front, it literally, when it was lit with with lighting internally, it kind of the whole thing glows. And we even had the sink made out of the same material. So it all kind of is one kind of one volume within, within, within the space. Um, but yeah, it's, this is one way of doing that, but in a lot of these accessories or lighting accents through within, within the market, you can achieve this and not necessarily make the commitment to this specific material in your, in your powder room or your, master bathroom or wherever wherever else so that's a great point you can just do a little lamp or a little object and you sort of get completely that light, right yeah, yeah. And, an, and another tip is like especially because of the opacity of the material especially some of these pendants etc if you put them in a dark space they really the glow and the the drama of the piece really really kind of illuminates the fact that in this powder room everything is done in like a like a dark gray um, mm. uh, paneled effect and the, the, the drama of that against the lightness and the opacity really kind of exudes a certain energy and I feel like within a lot of these elements if you put them up against dark gray or black or um, if you're into color like a beautiful teal like it would really um, it would heighten the, the drama of, of, of those pieces. So. Mm, beautiful. 
So next up, we have Sandra, who's talking to us about unique art furniture. She says, we live in a global world where every major city has gravitated to a modern aesthetic, so it can easily feel the same. Carefully curated, unique pieces add a twist and set a room apart. And Sandra, you have such a unique eye, and um, I really love the, the pieces that, that you pulled. Can you talk to us a little bit about your trend and sort of your, your spin? Sure. I, um, I, I love a little bit of quirky, and I love when design doesn't take itself so seriously that everything has to be perfect and monochromatic and identical and from the same showroom. And um, I feel like so many beautiful homes are modern today and you go in, but they're exactly cookie cutter. They look like they all came out of the same showroom. So they lack personality. And there's something really fun about, let's take that noir chair, it, you know, just to have something offbeat in a room, really it personalizes it. Or, or if you take the interlude, the, the lamp, it makes me laugh. I mean, it's, it's just, <laughs> and I love working with artists too. So for example, um, like all of Rick, um, the Rick Owen furniture or the Haas Brothers pieces, things that really are so unique. Um, or you can do a Peter Lane wall. I mean, there's so many things we can do as designers and we have so much power to influence our clients. So, you know, just putting a little more thought into it and bringing something unique to a room really makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, you, you design should make you smile, right? You should be surrounded by pieces that make you happy. So I, I really see that when, when I see your mix. Uh, talk about like this color, wow, that just makes me happy. Well, I think, you know, it's so easy. We all use beige, creams, grays. They're neutrals, they're fabulous. Of course we use it, but there's nothing that's more fun than just a burst of color, a pop of, like you said, happiness. Something that when you walk into a room, your eye can look at. Um, I, I love the all gray rooms or the all monochromatic, but there's something a little bit, you know, it's almost like restrained and boring about it. So if you have an opportunity to add something like a piece of art or a colorful burst, why not? I agree. Is it, is it challenging to get your clients on board? I feel like, you know, for something like this, um, you know, are your clients saying yes to it or do you have to talk, it, talk them into it a little bit? <laughs> well, I do presentations where everything fits together. So I always pre-shop for a client. So we know better what a client needs than the client actually knows. So I think a big part of design is not just taking them to one showroom where everything looks gorgeous or to, you know, just presenting the exact same. It's, it's we have to do the research. So it is a little bit of educating them what's on the market. Um, it would be like a a fashion stylist taking dresses to someone for the Academy Award. The stylist knows they've been to every runway show. They, they're they involved in the market, just like we are. So I think they do listen to us. And it is our job to present. You know, they might say no, but you have to try and get something very cool and unique and, and give them more than the standard. I mean, anybody can do standard. I love that. These are also two beautiful pieces. I mean, they really do act as art objects, right? You put it on a wall or you, or you put a few of these, this sort of interesting shaped picture out. Um, why did you pick these pieces? Well, I'm a huge fan of Dale Chihuly. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna turn my camera just a tiny <laughs> bit so you can see. Uh, here is uh, Dale Chihuly right next to me. Um, but I love glass art and I thought this is a very accessible version of something like that. And then the next piece also from Global Views is it, it reminds me of some of antique, like it could be Grecian or Italian pottery. And I'm also a huge fanatic fan of like Japanese ceramics. Those, those are things that make a room. So instead of just putting the normal dishes, I would, you know, if I can, if I have a budget and a job to do custom Japanese dishes. I mean, that to me is just, it's amazing for guests to come over and have custom made dishes that are a piece of art. Very special. Talk to us a little bit about this seating. I mean, talk about funky shapes, right? Both of these are really fun and very cool, but this is an outdoor look that I think is very on trend right now. I mean, people are living outside more and patios are getting bigger. Builders are getting into the idea that, you know, it's not just an inside, the inside and the outside. So outdoor furniture is getting extremely fun and interesting. And I, and I think that's another area that we have to explore color, shapes, art, 
and you have to decorate the outside too. You can't just plop a chaise lounge and, and think you're done. You have to envision how it's going to be used, who's going to sit on it, what, you know, just bring all of these amazing things to, to the game. Meredith and Philip, I kind of want to hear from you. Are you also seeing like the outdoors are now just a huge extension of the home? Like just if we pivot for a second, like is that something that all your clients are asking for? 100%. I think that, I mean, especially where Sandra lives and where we live, um, where you spend so much time outside because of the climate. Um, and with so many indoor outdoor fabrics and indoor outdoor rugs and indoor outdoor furniture, um, I think that people want to be more, especially in the climate we're in right now, I think people, if you have a terrace or a porch, um, you're, you're spending any moment you can outside, just getting outside of your, your home. So I definitely think that indoor outdoor industry is really, is really thriving right now. And outdoor fabrics have come such a long way. They're amazing now. Yeah. Agreed. What about you, Philip? I know Chicago, you know, isn't balmy all year, but I can imagine yeah. doing this these months, right? Yeah, I think that, honestly, I think that the, the fact that California and Texas and so much of the, so many of the states that have good weather year round, people visit and they experience that idea of being able to live inside and outside much more effortlessly. It has made that transition has ha happened within Chicago as well. Obviously, it's not year-round, um, but the months that we are able to live that way, people really want that, and they want it to extend as long as possible. So having comfortable furniture, having areas where you can work, where you can dine, where you can lounge, where you can entertain all sorts of groups of people is, is really, really important. And most people that are building homes that's usually on their, on their, one of their top priorities is to have that, um, that flexibility within, within the inside and the outside. You guys have a lot of great in Michigan, you have Northern Michigan areas, you have some great summer spots that people, yeah. are, you know, yeah. so those are all amazing opportunities for outdoor furniture too. Totally. Steve and I have a place up in, uh, up in Michigan and it's, it's like our happy place. And the fact yeah. that it's nothing fancy, but it's so nice to be able to, you know, hang out by the pool and just live outside as, you know, especially right now with, with COVID, it's just having that freedom of, you know, just being, just grilling and hanging out and just being in nature. Yeah. Agreed. We all need that right now. Boy. And Sandra, these pieces to me are, are a little bit more show-stopping. Um, I think- and the metals are beautiful. A, a little bit of drama is also a good thing. So at the same time, just because I like to be a little quirky if I can, or throw in something that's not so serious, I think there's also something very cool about being dramatic. So you can play off of all of it. And uh, so these pieces, I thought, um, fit into you know, a little bit, if you want to go a little more city, a little more dramatic. There's something for everyone. And just before we move on to this beautiful space, you know, I just kind of want to hear again from Meredith and Philip, like, you know, I'm sure everyone's, well, I wouldn't say everyone's traveling extensively, but I, not these days, but is there some sort of like place that you've traveled to that you've collected sort of artful objects from, or, you know, do you also have Japanese ceramics that, you know, line your floor? I just kind of want to hear a little bit about sort of your artful objects and, and what's special to you guys. Um. I would love to eat off handmade <laughs> Japanese um, dishware. Me too. Um, definitely on on my on my list. But in terms of travel, uh, I went to Bali last year, and that was so 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 inspiring. Um, the way I that there once. <laughs> yeah, the way that artisans the it's uh, artisans and workshops. It's so like um, integrated within the culture of of the island and. <laughs> the fabrics and the woodworkers and the metal workers, it's just like woven into the, into the culture of the space. I thought, found that so inspiring. And so many of the pieces that um, I purchased there, it's like, they're, they're so, they're like, they're my, they're like my, they make me happy and they make me smile in, 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 in my home. So. Oh, I love that. What about you, Meredith? Do you have something like a special treasure? Um, 
I, I think I have, I don't, one is not coming to mind, but I love collecting things wherever I go when I travel. Um, whether it's, you know, antique plates or uh, vintage textiles. Um, in, in my personal home, I, I, my husband's traveled extensively and has picked up things all over the world and I love to display those. And that's, I feel that's part of us and we always have a little bit of a global vibe to our homes personally, but I always encourage that for my uh, clients as well. Um, because anything personal to you that you pick up along the way is a good memory, that's a good memory you wanna definitely showcase. So I incorporated that a lot into my interiors and encourage my clients as well. And it personalizes the space too. Yeah. Sandra, walk us through this beautiful space. This is in Cabo, and this is a living room that everything opens up onto a giant outdoor area with a big pavilion um, and a lot of parties, single um, males, so a lot of uh, entertaining, which is why this is such a big living room. And here I did kind of like what you were talking about before, Philip, with the grouping of the coffee tables. So instead of doing one big giant coffee table, grouping, so you people can sit on them, you can move them, you can pull them around. So it's, it's very organic. So if you do have events, party, catering, they can move them or you can, you know, they uh, apparently there was a uh, there was a stripper that danced on them. <laughs> uh, right, Carrie has stayed here, you know, so like all of these things happen and you have flexibility. And, and I think that's also very important is flexibility in, in design because, you know, it's, it's like Again, I'm going back to wardrobe. You can wear a dress once with a big necklace and you can wear it once with a belt and you need to be flexible. Um, and I don't believe, you know, your interiors should stay cookie cutter, so they should be movable. I love that. So next up, um, Meredith is telling us that it's all about the mix. So she's saying the majority of my clients today are asking for updated traditional homes. I love the balance of time-honored materials and craftsmanship in each of these pieces, making them relevant to how we live today. It's the mix of old and new that makes something interesting. And Meredith, I, I love your mix here. Um, and I want to hear a little bit more from you about, um, you know, this updated traditional home and really the assortment that, that you were going for. Um, well, I think my clients are a lot of times young families, and um, they currently have come to me with collections of their own or beautiful antiques pieces that were passed down from their um, their parents. And so I feel like that's sort of a new thing where the where these young people are really wanting these more traditional homes. But they're not wanting what you've seen in the past. They want them colorful and more tailored and more collected feeling. Um, and so I have to work with a lot of these antiques that they bring me. And so my my job is to to balance them and make them not make the room not only feel authentic, but not, and not over. Um, not where it's obvious you walk in and you see a million antiques, maybe one or two pieces and combine them with a little bit more modern pieces or vintage pieces um, is, is an, creates a nice balance. Um, and so for these pieces, I spend a lot of my free time uh, going through antiques malls and flea markets, and I, I always refer to myself as a little scrappy. Um, I love anything that's old, and I'm particularly drawn to that arteriors bench because it feels like a really beautiful vintage piece. Um, and so I can certainly see using something like that multiple times in, in the homes I do in different ways. Um, and, and I love the noir piece because it's a, sort of a play on a classic Clismos chair. Um, so you're, you're again doing the balance of something very traditional taken to a, a modern, you know, a very sleek modern idea. Um, so I feel like it's always the play of high versus low, casual versus formal, um, hard versus soft, things like that, that help it, you know, be tailored without being overdone. 
I mean, like even these objects, I feel like, I, I don't want to use the word transitional because I know some people don't like that, but I feel like you do need pieces that sort of span from old to new to a lot of different looks. I don't know, yeah. when, especially when you inherit like an old home or an old space you have to design. Right. And for these pieces, I, they're so simple and marble and beautiful and as a form are really so pretty. And the minute I saw them, I thought, well, wouldn't they just be so much more dramatic against a really beautiful paneled, in a paneled library or a gorgeous antique farm table that you could set them on top of. Just that, that mix of really warm traditional wood and then having the really, you know, hard, uh, beautiful marble shape. Mm. That contrast. And this is another piece I feel like that can live in a lot of different spaces. I, I'm, I use a lot of trays. Um, I definitely, my interiors are very layered. Um, and so on my coffee tables, bars, consoles, um, I'm always placing a tray with a collection of beautiful bottles, whether they're, you know, crystal or just um, alcohol bottles or things like that. I love setting up a pretty bar or putting them on a coffee table where you can stack some books. Um, so it, this piece I really love because if you're using a, an antique um, coffee table or a, a walnut coffee table or something like that, that contrast of color is, is really pretty to me. And I feel like Palachek always has just such beautiful materials. And I think here yeah. even it almost looks like it's like a chagrin with that beautiful yeah. wrap. Rattan uh, is so pretty. Yeah, and it's very modern, but it's you know it, it, it's a good it's a to me it's all about layering it a little bit of mm -hmm. a little bit of here a little bit of there. Very important. That's and great. then this too is also such a good piece. Yeah, I mean, like I said in my description, there's nothing more classic than a great pair of etagères. Um, this immediately made me think of Billy Baldwin's library. Um, I would pair a. P uh, two of these in a study or even a bedroom. Um, it's just a great place to cr uh, combine a, um, a collection of books or um, accessories. And Sandra, I want to hear from you and sort of your, your take on bookcases, because I feel like styling them, I don't know, I, I feel like it's an art form. Are you like all, you know, one colored book spines or are you, this is where you're putting your like beautiful objet. I kind of want to hear how, how you would style this. Um, I don't usually, I love this look. I, I know exactly the Billy Baldwin look you're talking about. I typically do built-ins if I can. Um, and less and less people want books. I'm, I'm finding that everybody reads on their iPad and they have very few books. And where in the past I used to use so many books and, you know, to, you know, to decorate, and people are asking for less books in, in, my, in my area. Um, but as far as accessories, yes, people want beautiful, um, just really gorgeous accessories, something that really stands out. So that still is a trend, yes. Philip, what's your take on the bookcase? Are you like a color coordinated books type of person or you're just let it run? Wild? Uh, yes, <laughs> we, I, I like, <clears throat> I think that especially when you're using existing items that a client has, either books or objects, I think grouping them to give um, the eye um, some organization to group the objects in simu similar color tones is really great. Um, and then starting with a few large objects, either if they have, or that's what you bring in to balance and to really be the anchors within a bookcase and then mixing in the client's existing items and then the smaller elements. Um, but it, to my, in, in my opinion, it really helps bring order and it doesn't make the bookcase look chaotic or tchotchkeed, it kind of, it kind of um, refines it a little bit, which I think helps, helps people kind of make, make, make it feel like their existing objects have a little refresh. Mm, I love that. I feel like this book, oh, that bookcase really quickly. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love what both of them said. I feel like this bookcase um, sort of lends itself to more objects with books. Whereas sometimes in bookcases, like behind me and in my picture, I seem to like bookcases. But um, <laughs> I like I love to stack them and just pile them in and not like it, make it look too perfect. But something like this, I think, really lends itself to more of a showcase book. You mm. know, it's not. 
By the way, your photo, I love your books, how you have them color coordinated. Yeah. So you have, you know, from the peach to the green to the blue. I think that's super cool. I do it all different ways. Sometimes I color coordinate them. Sometimes I do them really messy and just jam packed with paperbacks. And then sometimes, you know, they're. I love the color coordinated one like that. It looks really fun. Thanks. Yeah. And Meredith, I think that your, your point in when a client has existing traditional pieces, bringing in these lighter tones and these different textures into the mix, it really helps refresh it. And so many times when people want to get rid of their like great brown furniture that they've either inherited or pieces that they purchased previously, I think el adding these elements in, it totally shifts the perspective. And then you're not buying new pieces to kind of fill and you're able to really kind of um, bring out some a different a different element. I think it's really, really smart. Exactly. Well, another thing that's really fun if you have antiques and it seems like you do, Meredith, is um, it depends. If somebody likes a piece, but it's not maybe a museum collector piece, take it and refinish it. Add something to it. Delete something from it. Um, right. Many, many times I've, I've done that. And you can take an old, really dark wood piece and have it stripped and you can paint it, you can do it in a gray tone, you can do so many things to change it and update oh, it great. to still keep the authentic, you know, carving on it. It's better to use it than not use it. So yeah. if you're not gonna use it and stick it in your garage and you want to paint it, paint it. Yeah. 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 Meredith, tell us about these pieces, how, how you would use them. I feel like this pendant light is so sweet, like over a kitchen island or, or where, where would you use it? Um, I love that little pendant because it's the play on a very classic bell jar. Um, and the ridged glass, I think, gives it that little shimmer. Um, I think you could put it in a small entryway. I would use it in maybe a small entryway with some really fabulous wallpaper um, and a patterned rug. And that just being so classic and simple would sort of be a good balance. Um, and then that desk, I really love that desk. I love the finish on it and how cool it is. And I think I would, it immediately comes to mind is because it's, it's not very big. It would be a great side table in a guest room because so many I travel so much and when I, and I try to stay with friends or clients and it's so nice when someone has a desk next to the bed that before I go to bed, I can sit there and type on my laptop and then put it away and, um, uh, go to sleep, but I love that there's it's it's a really small piece that would be nice as a side table as well. Mm. Oh, this space is so lovely. Um, the colors and as you said, it's all about the mix here, really. So so where is this space? This is a client of mine in Dallas, and um, she's an artist. She did that beautiful paint. She did both beautiful paintings. Um, and for this home. Um, it, I, I love this house that we did. She, um, has very colorful art and I wanted it to feel like you were stepping into the painting as you were in her house. Um, and she, because my interiors are generally so layered and so colorful that a lot of times the pieces that I use are somewhat tailored and simple. Um, and so that's why I love just the, because I have so much pattern going on and so much art and color that just a natural rug on a brick floor seemed to be really just what it needed. Um, but yeah, it's a, just a, it's an artist's home in Dallas that we wanted her to feel like she was walking into one of her paintings. Oh, I love it. And I love the fact that the doors are also colored. Mm. I think that is, the, you know, that's kind of the punch that I was talking about, not taking it so seriously. Does a door have to be wood? Can it be a color? I love that. I always like something to be a little off. So I agree with you, Sandra. I always want it. I, it's, I, I feel like I don't want to walk in into any house and feel like, oh, a decorator was just here. I, you know, always throwing something a little askew or a little off helps it feel very authentic and true to the person who's, who's living there. Yeah. So in the past, um, you know, when we're all scouting, I've sort of found a few trends that I'm loving as well. I tend to think of it a little bit differently. 
you know, more about sort of what's looking good on page or, you know, for me, it's a little bit more about the color or maybe the shapes. And I'm by no means an interior designer. So I, you know, I can't always envision how it will work together, but sort of right now, I'm, I'm really loving this, this shape shifters moment, um, you know, interesting forms and graphic lines, you know, are the perfect details to jazz up a space. I love how these bold pieces don't feel too loud when they're done in, you know, a neutral palette of blacks, whites, and grays. These colors are timeless, obviously, and will always have a place in your home. Um, so for me, it was sort of about, um, again, really interesting silhouettes. Um, Very and aesthetic. Yeah, just, you know, adding some graphic shapes and statement pieces. You know, we've obviously all been living in our homes now for months and months, and I'm kind of ready to jazz it up and, and add some loud pieces. One of my favorite designer collabs really from this year was this Hudson Valley lighting um, line with Kelly Bean. I just thought it was the perfect, you know, dose of glam and sophisticated and I was just very drawn to it. And then really everything that Noir is do doing, I, I am very into. I think, Sandra, you were saying, I like pieces that are a little funky. And this one was kind of retro and you, you always need some funk or something kind of quirky in a home. And this arteriors piece actually has a, a vellum facade and that mixed materials is really what draw my, you know, what caught my eye. And I think it's about, you know, layering different um, materials in your home that, that really makes it interesting. So a little while ago, I made a couple comparisons about fashion and furniture. So if I read this, you just want to get dressed up and put on things. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. I'd also love to have any of these in my home. So it's a mix, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Selamat. They do a lot of, you know, natural pieces, woven pieces. I actually find caning to, to be a little bit too sweet for me. Um, but here where it's mixed up with this glossy black and these very graphic lines, it, it doesn't come across as, you know, overly sweet. What's, what's your take guys on caning? I know it kind of was huge a few years ago. And um, what I do love about it is how it warms up a space. And it's that, you know, that color, especially when you're mixing, you know, whites and grays and blacks, like cool tones, you want something that brings in some warmth. But do you guys ever use caning in your interiors? I do because it's tropical and I like it. I think it's, you know, it's very fresh. And I would probably um, mix in tons of color with that. And if, when you bring color to caning, it also, it just looks so, it has that Southern tropical feel that's just, you know, really fun. I love caning too. Actually, my chair is caned. Oh yes, uh -huh. but I've painted it. I mean, I, these are really old chairs, and um, I've painted it white to just make it more fresh. I, I use it a lot. Anything natural as well, you know, incorporated. But I, I think you can paint it, and it has a nice texture to it. And I love the cell matte pieces. I really love that glossy black combined with it. It's it's really pretty and modern. I totally agree. I think the especially within these two pieces, that contrast of the dark and that kind of beige colored caning um, is, is really fresh. And I think it, it almost has um, a little bit more of a, like a mid-century, like kind mm. of French modern element to it, which I think is also really, really chic and interesting. And color would be great, but even against this white background, it just, there's like a graphic quality to them. Um, and you don't need much of it. A one piece in a room can really make a great statement. Mm, I can see this anywhere. That could be in Savannah. That could be in Nantucket. That could be in Florida. It's, it's a very versatile bit. Totally. Oh, yeah, I agree. And, you know, I'm in a small New York City apartment. Like, I use side chairs, you know, as side tables, you know, next to my bed in an entryway, flanking a bookcase. So I feel like just to have an extra, you know, chair or two laying around is always a good thing. And, and these seem very versatile. Yeah, I love that chair. Yeah. So next up, you know, talk about cool, funky shapes. Um, I'm such a fan of Palachek and, you know, the materials that they use. Uh, this, I think, uh, you know, from bookends and just like a, an objet, this is what you want to put in your bookcase, right? Just like interesting shapes that catch the eye. 
Um, and I think this is onyx and sort of goes into your material land, Philip, like, <laughs> you know, it has this beautiful sort of like ethereal quality and it's just like a show stopping material. And obviously here it's like this co coloration and this banding that's very, very graphic to me. Um, but you know, I, I love blacks and whites, but I'm, I'm a color person and, and green is really my favorite color and that chartreuse, you know, note here, I, I just love. What are you guys seeing in the color world? Are you seeing, you know, your clients are open to using, you know, chartreuses and greens or are you st still sticking in like neutral, neutral world? My world tends to be a bit neutral on the face, but I can always bring in colors, be it on pillows and curtains and trims. And so I do have some flexibility, but it, I just feel like most people are really, really more conservative on the bigger pieces. They don't want to recover that. So they're not willing to take a chance on the bigger pieces. Well, I'm, I'm more in the South where we have tons of color. Um, I'm currently doing my own home and I think every different, every room is a different color. <laughs> um, I'm more, I use a lot of blues and greens. Um, I think there's so many different shades and I think that's, people are most comfortable with those two, um, just because they're so easily found in nature and they bring the indoors, uh, excuse me, the outdoors in. Um, but yeah, I just, I love every color and I use a lot of prints and a lot of pattern, but any color is really, most any color I will use. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, I love color. I think that it, um, it's, if a client is willing to take a risk, that is usually the risk that I, I tell them to take. That if they're if they're open to it, it's something that they won't they won't regret. Um, and yes, it's always safer to to do um, the pillows and the accents. And but if someone really wants to create um, a unique element, even within a neutral home, one little nook or an office or a study, and to really envelop it in color is is sensational and i'm i'm a total equal opportunity colorist like i think that greens are fabulous blues oranges reds i think it really kind of depends on where where someone's comfort is i think the one thing that i find interesting is if you shift the saturation of the colors a little bit down um and muddy them a little bit i think that that really helps make it um allows people to live with the color and then not to feel so, you know, Crayola box, like, you know, bright, bright, blue, bright blues, bright reds, especially if you're enveloping a whole space, space in it. That's a great tip. I love that. Um, and then, you know, back to Noir, I said, you know, I'm, I'm really digging their sort of new collections and I just felt like the lines were super sexy on these. Um, I, I think this is a console. And I just feel like, you know, against a wall, it sort of catches, you know, it makes you, it makes you look twice and it just adds the right amount of visual interest to sort of um, really be a striking piece. And then ditto with this coffee table. I just thought it was such a playful design. You know, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but just really fun to look at, you know. Love it. And then, yeah, I, I love Christiane Lemieux. I think she's a, a dynamo and her, her rug collection with Momeni sort of spans a lot of different aesthetics. I believe this was actually inspired by Brutalist Art, but I just think it's fun. You know, in my own home, I actually have three like very big graphic rugs next to each other. And I kind of like the idea of this like pattern play on the floor. Um, I mean, I obviously love two of these together, but uh, what, what's your take on, on looking down? Um, do you guys do a lot of carpeting? Do you see wall to wall making a comeback anytime soon? What's your take? <laughs> I like hard surfaces with big rugs. I love big rugs, colorful. That's where I definitely enjoy having a big splash of color, if possible. Um, and a lot of times you can get that with, you know, either some of the Tibetan rugs or, you know, just there's so many options for rugs in today's world. I love those rugs you pulled. Um, and I would see doing even more pattern and print on the fabrics that I would pair with it because I think you have so much space. Um, but um, I think this is really great. I, I, for me, because I use so much print and pattern, usually my rugs are more either geometrics or smaller scale 
pattern. Um, but I think I could, I could really love something, use some, using something like that. It's just, I think I would meet, need to really have larger um, furniture pieces and maybe not have a patterned sofa, but maybe just in the accessories. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, these, these rugs are awesome. And I even, a lot of times when I'm um, buying like pre-made rugs and we have a large space, I'll have them stitched together so then there you can get more mass and have just a really cool effect like i feel like these two rugs stitched together and to make one big rug would be so cool and the mm -hmm. graphic quality of it um we also upholster a bunch of stuff with rugs as well which is a really great idea like this i could see it like even a back of a banquette would be so fun and you would get mm -hmm. like the texture and the, and the black and the in the bit in the neutral tones would be really really interesting um, but yeah, I think it's great, um, especially when they're flat weaves or um, thinner. It's it's great, great to upholster with rugs. Mm. And what else do I have? Oh, right. So last but not least, you sort of see this fun um, table lamp, you know, in context. And I feel like this kind of just epitomizes this like shapeshifters idea, like very cool forms, beautiful elevated materials. It has um, a bit of the 80s, kind of that, um, you know, it tore itself to feel. You're right, Sandra. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I wonder if, she, I'm sure she took inspiration from that. But, um, you know, this is, you just want these kind of small pieces that can just jazz up a space. It doesn't have to be a huge rug. It can just be something as simple as a table lamp that sort of injects, you know, new life into a space. Um, so that's sort of what I was thinking with shapeshifters. So I did forget at the beginning of this program to sort of ask, ask you know, everyone to, submit questions if they wanted to, you know, the audience members. I think there's a Q&A at the bottom where you could, um, you know, submit questions. I, I don't see anything here on mine, but um, if there, are, you know, we'll take a, maybe we'll just take a beat and let people submit any questions. Oh, here we go. There's a chat. Okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll give everyone a sec to answer questions. I want to thank, you know, all of you guys for your input. I really love sort of chatting about, you know, what's inspiring you, what you're seeing in the market. You know, I'm bummed this year that, you know, we didn't actually get to go to Las Vegas, but, you know, hopefully next year, right? Or maybe yeah, yeah. some other market. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Let's see. I wonder if we should give them one more minute. Sorry, I, I forgot to, to mention that at the beginning. Um, but again, yeah, a big thank you to all of you guys. And, you know, I hope, uh, you know, throughout this summer, maybe there's, you know, a little bit more travel and a little bit more inspiration happening. I know we're sort of sitting in our homes and, you know, confined to what's happening there. But, you know, thank God we're all in the design world, right? <laughs> At this moment in time. That's where everyone's spending their time. I know it has been it's strange because typically, you know, summer is spent, you know, traveling. Like Meredith, you have kids, I'm sure you travel in the summer and then put them in school and that's gone this year. Yeah. Everybody's spending more time at home and I've heard a lot of um I've had a lot of I've, clients call for, you know, doing a little bit of refreshes. I mean, I'm sure you guys have too. It's just everyone's sitting around thinking about their interiors a little bit more than they're used to. There's a lot of people moving too. Seems like moving I is, is a, you move. Where did you move? I'm, from? Yeah. I, I'm now in Dallas. I used to be in Austin. So. Okay, so you, typically it's been the opposite from city to resort. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I lived in LA and then we moved to Austin. So but we were there for 10 years and now we're in Dallas. Okay. So we are one of those that moved during this time. Oh, mover. <laughs> And Meredith, where do you have your showrooms? Is it Dallas, Austin? Um, Houston and Dallas currently. We okay. have an, a by appointment place in Austin. Got it, I see. Yeah, I love all of the textiles and all the lines you guys um, carry. It's so beautiful. Thank you. So fun to see how, like what mix, you know, you put together and sort of what you curate. And also obviously what's trending in your region or what people yeah. are buying, right? 
yeah, it's fun having a showroom, getting to to push it a little bit at times and try things that are new. It's a, it's a good testing ground for, you know, working with clients. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, it doesn't seem like anyone has any questions, but thank you again, Sandra, Philip, Meredith. This was really enjoyable and I loved hearing about what you guys are seeing. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next thank time. Thank you. It was really wonderful. Yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye.